Hello and welcome to Yamas and Niyamas. My intention for this module is to help you incorporate the lessons of the Yamas and Niyamas into your practice and into your lives so that you can view them as a very practical philosophy for living. And from that experience, enable you to bring these lessons to your students in very interesting ways. Like many of you, my first exposure to Yamas and Niyamas was in my 200-hour teacher training. And to be 100% honest with you, I thought they were boring. I paid attention, of course, during the training, but afterwards, I didn't understand how to practically Im implement them into my practice or what they really meant. And in my mind at the time, they kind of just felt like a system, uh, a list of rules to follow, not too unlike the Ten Commandments. And viewed from that perspective, um, yeah, the, you know, I understood that that sure we're supposed to be nice to each other, not harm each other, and that lying and stealing and all of these things are bad for us. But outside of that, it just seemed like a dogmatic list of rules from another ancient text. After a while, I think around the time that I was taking a 300-hour training, I started to revisit uh, some of the older textbooks that my previous teachers had recommended to me. I started visiting textbooks that the teacher in my 300 hour was recommending to me. And I found another translation of the Yoga Sutras. I found a translation by BKS Iyengar. And I'll, I'll place a, a picture and link to that translation on the page below. But I started to read it from a, the perspective of someone who had lived their entire life as a yogi dedicated to the practice and not merely as a scholarly text. And that started to transform the way that I viewed the topic of the yamas and niyamas. And then I noticed a key distinction that sort of separated these list of rules from the biblical Ten Commandments that, that had a, a stronger appeal to me. Whereas in the Ten Commandments, the punishment for not adhering to them is uh, eternal damnation in hell. And that's a concept that I don't know if I fully embraced and I, and I have a lot of problems with it. But with the Yoga Sutras, with the Yamas and the Niyamas, the consequences are not such that you will burn forever if you don't follow them or adhere to them. The consequence is that you simply won't live a life as well as you otherwise could. And I think that is a profound difference. And that is something that, that I can find relatable and I think is much more practical in a sense that we can incorporate their teachings. When we start to view the yamas and niyamas as a practical guidebook to live by and not just a list of rules, another list of rules to follow, it starts to open up new dimensions of possibilities. And everybody in this world, your students especially, they are craving something more, some deeper connection to purpose, some deeper connection to this experience of life. And for most of us, yoga is an avenue into that deeper connection. And just as you have been inspired by your favorite teachers, the teachers that are really capable of helping you tap into deeper and subtle meanings, things and perspectives that you possibly hadn't realized or witnessed before, I want to help you reach that same point where you can be inspirational to your students and rise to the role of teacher that you aspire to be. Throughout this module, I will discuss the yamas and niyamas with perspectives that you perhaps have not heard before or considered. Sometimes I like to take on the role of a devil's advocate and present a perspective of yamas and niyamas that, that might not fit in with the common narrative that we typically hear, the, the washed, the clean version. We're going to get nitty-gritty in our discussions of these things and how they apply practically to our lives. And it's not that I want to create disagreement, but what I want to do is instigate critical thought. And I want you 
to go through your own critical analysis, to think about these lessons, to process these lessons, and then find a way that makes them more meaningful and applicable to you. And with that understanding, take that into your lessons to have a transformative experience for your students. At the end of each lesson, I will give you a number of action steps to work on. This will help you to process this information and place it into a context of your own perspective. This helps to create real understanding of the material. And it's from this understanding that you will have the tools to then take these lessons on to your students. Let's begin, shall we?